All right, guys, I'm going to show you guys how to do the data tables for the Now We're Cooking that Lab Report. Okay, so you already have your intro and your procedure, and you're ready for the data. I'm going to show you how to do the tables and calculations in Excel, which you can use for any lab report. Super easy. Um, okay, so the first table we need to do is uh, Table 1, the nutritional data. I'm going to make all of the tables in Excel just so you get a feel for it and it's just easier when working with the tables. So we have our fuel, type in all our headings. Um, we have our calories in one serving we, with the units of calories. We have our serving size in grams. And we have our food calories per gram, okay, or calories per gram. We have our peanuts and our marshmallows and our Cheetos, okay. In order to spread things out so that you can see everything, you can just select it, get this little tool with the two arrows, and move the column widths so that you can see everything fine. Okay, going to do that on all of them. Also, oh, I like my headings to be bold, so just select them and bold. Click, drag, select, and it, you can make them bold. And in order. So our peanuts have 170 calories in one serving, and the serving size was 28 grams. Okay, marshmallows is 100 calories per serving. And 29 grams. Our Cheetos were 160 and 28 grams. Notice I'm not typing anything but numbers in these boxes. Because I'm going to do math with it, Excel only understands numbers. So as long as you have the units in the heading, don't worry about putting the units down below because Excel doesn't understand that. Calories per gram, Excel can do the calculation for you. You type an equal sign that says, hey, look, we're going to be writing a function. We're going to be doing some math. So it's the food calories, okay, that column right there, divided by this one right here. Enter, and it gives you the number. Okay, so again, equals calories divided by grams. You don't even have to type it every time. See this little square down here? You can click it and drag it down, and it will automatically update the function to be what you want it to be. Now these are a lot of numbers, we don't want that many numbers, so it's this button right here that can limit the number of sig figs, okay? We just want two because that's how many our serving size had. Then we add the borders and we can copy and paste it into our lab report, okay? The next table that we have is our experimental data. Okay. So because I didn't want to mess up this one, I already set this one up in another sheet. Okay. And actually I'm going to clear this out so that I can show you guys how to do it. Okay. But here's my data. All of this, there was no math involved, so I just typed it all in and then I used these buttons to make sure that it had the right number of decimal places, the right number of sig figs. Okay, so I set all that up. For the change in temperature, okay, it's easy down here. I have my fuel, my mass of water, and I can tell Excel, oh, that is this number right here, the final temperature, minus the initial temperature, and it will give me the number. And then I can click and drag it down and automatically it updates. See, this one is called F3 minus E3, F3 minus E3. This one is F4 minus E4, 5, 6, etc. Okay, the energy absorbed by the water, that's where we use that equation Q equals MC delta T. So we have our M, which is our mass of the water, times our C, which was one calorie per gram degree Celsius, okay, times our change in temperature and it'll give us the number. And then just drag it down, okay? And it'll automatically fill them in 
with the right numbers. Okay. Mass of fuel burned, that is your initial mass, minus your final mass. Okay. And, oops, drag down. Okay. And up here, you can always check and make sure that it's the right numbers, C3, so, or just click on it, and it'll highlight what numbers it's using, which they are the right ones that we want it to be doing there. Now, our calories per gram. Calories divided by grams. Click, drag it down. Okay. I already have it set. You might get weird numbers if you get, oops, cancel. If you get weird numbers, again, just remember to use this to control how many decimal places you have. Okay. And then we can copy those over. Oops. Copy, paste. Okay, if it does this weird thing where it goes off the page, very easy to fix. You just select the table, table layout, and auto fit it. Okay, you can auto fit it to the contents. Now we're missing the little degree sign on our temperatures. To add that in Word, you go insert, symbol and you find it, there's the degree sign right there, and you just click and drag it to where it needs to be. Okay, easy to fix. There we go. Now table three is actually part of our results and calculations section of the lab report. Okay, data is just your raw data that you collect. If you do any math with it, it belongs in results and calculations. So here's that table that we had set up. Select, copy, and paste. We want to auto fit it so that it all fits. Oh, and I forgot to title that table. Make sure you title all of your tables. That was table three calculations. Oh no, what did I do? Oh well, undo button. Okay, so you will follow the same kind of thing for tables four and five. Okay, on table four, there's one where it requires you to do an average. Okay. So what you can do there, I'm show you guys over here. Say you have this number and this number, okay? And you want to take the average in these. First, I'm going to merge those cells to make it become one cell. And then you type equals. I want it to do the average, okay? I want it to average these two numbers. Done, okay? It'll automatically do it for you. Just remember, only type your numbers when you're using them to do calculations. Excel does not understand units. It doesn't understand um, letters at all. All it understands is numbers. So you want to make sure you only have numbers um, in your boxes and have all of the units in your headings. Okay? Like on that one, I forgot. Okay? So if you need any help, let me know. Um, oh. I forgot this too. If you want to copy something down, like for this, I had to copy it. So I just went copy, paste. And it can do that for you too. So you don't have to type everything a million times. And you should end up with a nice, pretty lab report.